Hey you guys, welcome back. As you can see, we got the tractor out here for the time being. I'm putting some soil down in hopes of leveling this out just a little bit, just before I put the ramps in. So I made the final decision on what the ramps are gonna look like for my equipment shed right here behind me. And just to refresh your memory, the ramps are in place in order to get snowmobiles and the golf carts and the ATV and all that up into this location. What I'm gonna do is use some old four x fours that I found and I'm gonna put those into place. They're gonna be sitting on top of the soil and then we'll have some wood of some sort. I gotta figure that out still. Going from four x four to four x four. So we'll have a series of ramps here, getting some soil in place first and foremost. Once that soil's in place, you'll see me do a bit of back dragging with the bucket and that'll just make this a little more even. As you can tell, it's higher there than here. So we're gonna add just a little bit of soil right here. And we're gonna start driving some nails home, putting some screws in and building some ramps. Welcome guys, glad you're all here. Let's get down to work. Always funny when it pours out when the sun's out. I don't know what's going on right now, but that's the case. Anyways, probably a good excuse to have a little sludge break. You guys can You guys can just about imagine that sludge. Tastes pretty good right about now. 
regardless of the fact it's about 35 degrees Celsius and humid as a swimming pool. All right, guys, just having a step back here and taking a quick break. You guys can see we've made some progress here today. All of our 4x4s are in place, and I think the next step is for me to actually secure the 4x4s to the shed itself. Just a moment ago, you guys saw me breaking out the shovel. What I was doing was I was more or less putting in these bricks underneath the end of all the 4x4s so that when they're positioned, they're all on the same plane. I was using this long deck board here, and I was using that level up there to make sure everything was on the same plane. We have a plane up there, those are all the same, and we have a plane down here, these are all the same, and so I think we're in good shape. Next thing I'm gonna do, as I mentioned, is I'm going to secure these four by fours to the actual deck platform. You can see right now, they're just sort of sitting in place. What I've done in order to secure them is I put this block into place. On the back of it is construction adhesive with screws holding it to the actual rim board here. Now, this right here, this four by four, all of them also have a 10 degree miter on it and that allows for it to sit nice and flush up against that rim board the top of this block also has a 10 degree angle on it and you'll notice here that gives me a nice flush finish i know it might not be overly important but for me i like knowing that it's uh, got a good fit and finish on it so that's that we'll get that secured then i'll get all my deck boards run across here I haven't quite figured out what that's going to look like got to see what material i have available if you're having a look at these 4x4s here, take note that these are pretty old pressure treated pieces that I had I had kicking around so I figured what the heck we'll reuse them. There's a few here like right there where I didn't have pressure treated 4x4s but I had two 2x4s and so I just sandwiched them up. Figured we'd use them just as well. Just a moment ago with the chainsaw you guys would have also seen me cutting these little notches out and you can see this is a big tree root here. Instead of getting the whole tree root dug out, what I did was I just cut out the sections where the where the post goes. And you can see it creates a bit of a slot. And I did that so that we get the exact same plane all the way along here for when I put the deck boards on. Once I get all these deck boards into place, what you guys are gonna notice, I'll put a bit of topsoil here. That'll fill the gap from this level up to the top of the deck board so that it's nice and seamless and there's no bumps. You'll also notice up here, these are set down about an inch and a half. That's because that's the thickness of my deck boards and so that way it'll be nice and smooth without any bumps.
Well guys, I can tell you one thing is for certain, that is not a lot of fun. We got those paver stones in place and all that's gonna do is act as a barrier between the wood pieces there and the soil that I'm gonna put in place. The soil is basically gonna butt right up against here and it's gonna be at the same level as that. And then you'll basically drive off the soil onto this and then onto the wood decking, which as you can see, I'm a little short on. So that's the next step. We gotta go and get some lumber and I'm not going to the lumber yard, I'm going to the sawmill. So fingers crossed that goes smoothly. Then we'll get back out here, get the lumber attached. And I think we're good to go. Maybe put a few loads of soil up to it with the tractor and then I'll be driving all the equipment in there. So fingers crossed, let's go. So I was out here earlier and you guys can, maybe you can't see. I got stung twice by some bees that were up in a box up there. You guys see the bees are back. I threw the box outside took off running and I just got back and I'm going to try to hit him with this stuff. You guys remember the fern field? There it is. We made it all right guys as you can see we got our first vehicle up here inside the toy shed and I definitely didn't take any effort to get it up here you're gonna notice we haven't finished off the ramp completely I've only got about one-third of it done and that all comes down to those bees you guys sort of uh, 
Well, I was sort of fighting off. You saw those bees and unfortunately the bees won and the nest is still there. Uh, the bees did chase me, they stung me and I decided we're gonna leave it there and I'll be cutting wood another day because it's, uh, it's no fun getting stung and then trying to cut wood and look over your shoulder for what's next. So I'm gonna cut that wood, just not today. And just having a look at what we've done for material, you guys can see here, here's the boards we used for the top. So these are inch and a half thick, six inches wide and various lengths. Now I'm gonna stagger these when I put the rest of the boards on and it sort of creates a stronger, stronger platform here. But for now, I put it here just, uh, just sort of set there so I could get one of the machines up. In fact, I could probably put another golf cart there. Uh, but as, as we finish off here, you'll end up seeing this all secured. So underneath that, as you saw, four by fours, these are pressure treated and the four by fours sit on concrete blocks. What I did was I put these capstones and these capstones butt up against that four by four. And what these are doing are basically providing a barrier between the end of the four by four and the actual soil. Uh, that way these four by fours aren't gonna have any soil contact. They're just sitting on the concrete and they'll be covered by the top of the deck boards. So that's gonna be in place down there, both locations. Up here, you saw me packing down some of the soil here. I use the tractor to do that. The tractor has a rim guard, which is beet juice in the back tires. So they are quite heavy. I think they're around 900 pounds, just the tires each. So we're putting some weight down here, packing the soil down. It's gonna take time. This will eventually settle where it's going to. Then what I'm gonna do there, because many of you are probably saying that's gonna get awful muddy in that shed. What I'm gonna do there is put this stuff down. You guys can see here, it's really, really thick rubber. All right, this was actually in a horse stall and uh, a friend of mine uh, gave that to me. So we're gonna put that down over the mud or uh, soil rather, so it doesn't become mud. And that's gonna go in this general location. It's also gonna help to make it so the studs in the snowmobile track doesn't eat away at the wood going up the ramp and inside the shed. So that's gonna be coming up next. I gotta go back out there and try to fight off those bees, but I'm gonna let them simmer down a little bit cause they were probably quite angry when I was leaving. And boy, was I leaving in a hurry. Anyways, if we make our way up here, you guys can see we've got the two levels here. Here's the one level, here's the other level. Uh, this level is gonna get the same treatment as the one down below here. Deck boards across the top, we'll screw them into these, uh, these uh, four by fours here, and then we'll have a nice even level platform going up to the top here. So having a look at the materials I used here, some of you guys are probably saying to yourself, well, I thought you weren't going to the lumber yard, and you know what, I didn't. I actually had these old four by fours just kicking around from an old project. So I figured might as well use them now because I didn't really have any idea uh, how I was gonna use them. So I put them down here. Uh, I put them down in a way that allowed for air space to be maintained in between the platform and underneath the four by fours. So there's a bit of an airspace there. Uh, that way I can allow the underneath part of the platform to dry when, uh, when necessary. You guys can picture the springtime when moisture is coming out of the ground. You need some airflow through there so that dries. Having that gap between the bottom of the bottom of the ramp and the soil gives that air gap. So that's one of the reasons I chose this style here with the, with the wood. Um, I was thinking about concrete. I was thinking about stone. Um, for those of you out there who are saying you should have done that, yeah, it would have provided a good option. The, the difference between this and that is that option would have cost me money. And this option actually cost me nothing. So I went with materials I had on hand um, just for ease of availability and for cost and probably for no other reason. Well guys, I'd say that's a pretty good milestone here for this toy shed slash equipment shed build. Now, instead of having to carry things up into the shed, I can just drive them on up in. That is of course, when I finish the rest of the ramps. I think that's what's coming up next. I'm gonna go out at dusk and I'm probably gonna try to prod those paper, uh, paper wasps out of their nests and probably run for the hills. Once that happens, hopefully in another day or two, I can get back out there, cut the rest of the wood for the rest of the, uh, rest of the ramp there. That'll finish off the main part of this toy shed slash equipment shed build and then I'll be on to the next part, which I haven't quite decided is going to be next, but I think it's gonna be the siding. Gotta scratch my brain a little bit more about that. As always guys, I appreciate you watching. Make sure you come back next time. If you are brand new, welcome aboard. If you're not brand new, as I say, welcome back. And guys, we'll see you all next time.